Welcome to Colossians Closet. This is what we find in chapter three, clothes. Now, be assured you will need to listen to the subcontext of this. During this family life series in our lives, whether we live with others, whether we live in families, or whether we don't, we live by ourselves, we deal with clothes. Now, people who live in families may deal with more clothes or have more laundry on a weekly basis than those who do not, but everyone has clothes. Everyone has changed sizes from when we were little till now. Some of us may have changed some sizes in the last six months, but we don't really need to talk about that today. What we are going to talk about is our closets according to Colossians 3. Now I realize that James read verses 12 through 17, but before we get to those verses, we need to hear some of the verses preceding them because they are a part of the Colossians closet too. The first verses talk about things that are above or in the top of the closet. Verse one begins with, so if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things on earth. So what is in the top of your closet? What are you seeking or striving for? Are you setting your minds on Christ? When you put on a cap or a hat or a, a, a baseball cap or a stocking cap or a scarf, I challenge you to think about putting on the mind of Christ. Quickly moving on to verse three, we begin to talk about death. You have died, verse five says again, put on death, or put to death, don't put on death, sorry. Put to death. Put to death whatever is in you that is earthly. And then it lists fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed which is idolatry. Before we even begin to think about filling our closets with clothes that should be there, which is what we already heard about in verses 12 to 17, we need to make room. We need to clean it out. In our closets can be all those clothes that squeeze, that are tight, that suck the life out of you, the life that we, we are living in Christ, all those things that are not of God, things, clothes that we need to get rid of. What are those? We've already heard a number of them in our worship this morning. Racism, sexism, bullying, criticism, judgment, intolerance, something called what I think of as surety of information. We're just so sure. Being right, maybe a know-it-all attitude, jealousy, lying, cheating, probably other things could be named, but let's encompass all of it in one word, sin. And it is not enough to just take them off and get rid of them. We need to repent. We need to say we're sorry for wearing them in the first place. Now friends, I'm talking as much to myself as to you. The words, I am sorry that I, may need to come out of our mouths a little more often these days. And please notice how I said that. It's not, I am sorry if I, Somehow that leaves us off the hook. We don't really have to own up to it if we say, if I. I am sorry that I recognizes I was wrong. I encourage you to make your apologies sincere and admit it. Now that we've worked on cleaning out our closet, and we have to do this from time to time, because we do take our eyes off of Christ, where do these clothes go? Don't even think about taking them to Goodwill or etc. They don't want them either. 
These clothes are to be thrown out, discarded. Where? Throw them on a pile at the foot of the cross. That is where they belong. That is where sin belongs. Because Jesus took on our sin. This is where Jesus demonstrated the ultimate love, a deep, sacrificial love. Jesus emptied himself there, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, being born like you and I. But Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, a death of crucifixion, the most painful and humiliating death that you or I could imagine. And why? Because Jesus wore love. Jesus still wears love. We all know that verse. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16. It isn't simply the most famous verse. It is true. It is real. Are we listening? Are you hearing me? How are we going to respond? One answer is we are going to leave those clothes there. We are going to get up and turn and respond to Jesus' invitation. Jesus who calls us holy and beloved sons and daughters. Jesus calls us to put on new clothes. Verse 12. Put on everything listed, and I love this hall tree. It lists what is in verse 12. I'm not sure all of these things would fit me or that would even look good. Anyway, love this. Compassion, kindness, humility, patience. Verse 13 invites us to bear with one another, put up with each other. Do our best to forgive And over all of our clothes, wear a great big bathrobe or blanket or whatever is big for you of love. We also want to try to allow space for Christ's peace and do our best to be thankful. Those are named also in these verses. Friends, whether you are living in a family situation or not, whether you're living in the dorm, in the villa, with others, or by yourself. We all need to take time to consider our closets. One way and one reason to do that specifically today is that it is World Communion Sunday. And tonight we can join our Christian brothers and sisters around the world who are celebrating communion by meeting together outside in our outdoor evening worship service. And that is where we will be taking communion. James already announced it, six o'clock tonight. Everyone is invited. And you might think, well, it might be kind of cold. What am I gonna wear? (laughs) What will you wear? By now, I hope you are not surprised at the question. As you think about preparing to come tonight to participate in communion, are there things in your closet, in your wardrobe, that need to be discarded of, repented of? Please take some time to do that. And if you can't do that today, sometime this week, take some time. Spend some time with God and with your closet, either literally or figurative, figuratively. Closets can be nice, quiet places to pray. What is God asking you to release, to get rid of, so that God can clothe you more abundantly, lavishly, empoweringly than you could ever have asked or imagined? How do we keep all these clothes looking good and fitting well? Verse 16, we regularly take them to the cleaners, which is the word of God. One of the dry cleaners I have used is, has this great big mechanism that circles the clothes around. The person helping me pushes a button, and we wait while the clothes come around, and finally the item that I'm there to pick up comes to the front. Folks, the cleaning out of the closet we have talked about today is not a one-time activity. 
We may be going through life, and all of a sudden, some of those clothes that we had gotten rid of in verse 5 show up in our closets again. They've come around. We thought we'd gotten rid of them. But that's why we need to keep going through our closets. Keep repenting. Keep asking God to open our eyes. But let me be clear, the book of Colossians reminds us that God's love and grace does not depend on us always doing the right thing or saying the right thing or following a bunch of legalistic rules. Grace and salvation come before the demands. This is always God's way, says Ernest Martin, who wrote the Believer's Church commentary on Colossians. He also reminds us that Paul's appeal in Colossians is to do what is fitting in light of what you have experienced in Christ. Love God, love people as Christ showed us how to love. Try to put on love at all times and in all ways as God helps us. Another piece of good news is that these clothes from God never go out of style. Putting on love will always look good. Do not walk out to start your day without putting on love. Put on love every day. Again, as we have already talked about this morning, we have had quite the week. As a world, we continue to be in the pandemic, As a nation, we experience the presidential debate. And as James already mentioned, on Friday, President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for COVID. The need for justice continues. Black lives matter. The need for seeking shalom and working at shalom for all people continues. The challenges of school continue. The challenges of health continue. And then this week, we said farewell to our brother, Kurt Buller, who died and went to his heavenly home. We released him to God's eternal care and into God's safe keeping on Friday at the graveside. All of these things affect our lives And yet somehow death brings a particular focus. Death helps us put on love each day in a particular way so that we may continue to relate to each other in love. As it says in 1 John 4 verse 19, we love because God first loved us. And God loves us perfectly in every way, completely and unconditionally. Earlier, the music team led us in the song, Nothing is Lost on the Breath of God. Here again, some of the lyrics. Nothing is lost on the breath of God. Nothing is lost forever. God's breath is love. The next verse was, God sees with love. The next verse was, God's heart is love. And that love will remain holding the world forever. May we all do our best to put on that kind of love, to reflect that kind of love today and in all the days to come. I close with these verses um, in the way that they are stated in the message version. So, chosen by God for this new kind of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you, Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Amen.